I just load up that serum as well. Yo, 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 Sketty here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and a brand new tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at how to synthesize kicks in Serum with a little bit of post-processing as well. But before we get into it, as it's YouTube, if you like this content, if you like, hit the like button, subscribe, the notification bell, and any um, future tutorials you'd like to see, leave a comment and obviously it's something that I could look at to do in the future. But yeah, let's get into it. Synthesizing kick drums in Serum. Let's go. So I have a blank instance of Serum here, just initialize preset with the uh, standard sawtooth. Um, one thing I'm going to do with this, because I'll be working in um, F1, I'm going to set the octave to minus one, because I've set up a little MIDI region here as well. And that just makes sure that my sub will be hitting at the right low frequency between sort of 30 and 100 hertz. So we're going to have that sound. Obviously, it doesn't sound like a kick drum at all right now. But we're going to start processing this sound to make it sound, obviously, more like a kick drum. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to use analog BD sign throughout this. We're going to look at some different um, things like FM and some noise as well. Um, but first of all, I'm going to look at the pitch and how to create this into sort of a sweeping kick drum sound from the transient to the body to the tail of the sound. First thing we're going to do as well is we're going to um, set this master to 49% just so it doesn't clip because when we start to utilize the compressor and so on and so forth, it will start to get quite loud, but we don't want it to clip. So first thing that we're going to operate is with the LFO one, and this is going to control our master tune of the entire um, serum, because when we start to include, if we're going to work with FM or um, other oscillators, this is going to control the pitch for the entire sound. We're going to keep this as a quarter note as well. But we're going to set this to envelope mode so that it only triggers once, um, that it doesn't loop around and around, um, because otherwise we'll just have a continuous kick drum pattern. We just want a one shot at the moment. Um, the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to set um, this basic pattern to start with and I'm going to have the LFO in the matrix with a different type, not unidirectional but bidirectional. So that's why we're going to set this LFO one with this pattern. So the next thing that we're going to do, and with this being a quarter note, if you can imagine this whole box is a quarter note, then we have an eighth note. Um, if we split it in two, and then a 16th note if we split it into four. Now the reason why we need to know that is because of the pitch transient that we're going to do at the beginning, the pitch sort of sweep down throughout the body and then tailing off. Uh, so it's good to know the sort of different lengths, uh, with this being a quarter note, if you split it into it's two eighth notes and then four sixteenth notes. So yeah, we've got the um, initial pitch sweep transient down and what we're going to do is obviously we're going to edit this throughout at the moment I'm just making the sound uh, sorry making the LFO um, just shaping it for now but this is when we're then going to start um, fine tuning it and tweaking the sound as much as we want to create the specific sound kick drum that we want so I'm just going to add another point in here so these are basically sort of the main points of the entire kick drum you're going to be looking for sort of a pattern like this obviously it's um, sweeping down in the first sixteenth and then in the second 16th, it's sweeping down a little bit further and then tailing off for the last eighth note. So when we listen back to it now, it obviously, yeah, before we do that, let's apply it to the the actual pitch of the the main synth itself, so the master tune. Um, so LFO1 goes into master tune, and we want to make sure that this is a bipolar as well. So if it's only got one direction of arrow, that's unidirectional, so we need to make sure it's bidirectional, so the arrows are on both sides. And as we start to play through, through this, obviously this is quite quiet at the moment. If I turn this up just for level for now, this is where we can start to hear the pitch interaction happening. Now in a sense, you could actually just leave that there and render that out and you've got a kick drum and you can start processing that. But we're gonna take this a little bit further and see how how far we can obviously shape this into a real uh, usable sounding kick drum. Because at the moment, like that does sound like a kick drum, but it's not that good at the moment. So we're gonna go a little bit further with it. I'm just gonna um, bring the master down to 49%. So this is where we can start really um, affecting the sound. Before we get into this um, editing too much, I just wanna make it louder. We're gonna add a compressor in multiband mode, which is gonna take a bit of tweaking and a little bit of filter just to take off some of the high end, which we're gonna be using with another LFO as well. Um, so yeah, let's uh, turn the compressor on and bring this up in level. Now at the moment, obviously, because I'm using analog BD sign, that does have some slight harmonics in the upper um, end of the sound. And obviously in multiband mode, the 
compress it is going to accentuate that. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to bring this band all the way down to 0%. Which just gets rid of that um, top end as much as we can with the compressor, but we're going to do it further with a filter as well. We're going to bring the mids up because with this pitch sweep, it is sweeping through the mids into the low end, and this is where the body of the kick drum sounds. If you if you just sort of get rid of that, you've got a lot of nice sub end, but if you consider playing this over lots of different systems, from a big system to a, a little iPhone or whatever it is, you want um, a kick drum that is compatible across as many systems as possible. So that's why ooh, I was changing the low band there. Bringing up the mid band is where you really start to get the body of the kick drum. So this band is usually sort of between 80 and 2000, kilo, uh, 2000 hertz. So basically the full mid range of the sound. And obviously lifting up the low end as well. I was just to bring some more of that sub in. So now what we're going to do now that this is louder is we're going to tweak the sound um, and this is where I'll go through sort of each stage of the sound from the transient to the body to the tail end which will sort of show the shape um, and how, how this can shape the pitch of the sound and make it into a, a quite a different kick drum so we can have a very sort of static sounding kick drum all the way through to a, a, a big sweeping kick drum. So if we just work with um, the transient for now. Obviously this sound is going to change us from different styles all the way through to sort of hard techno and then bringing it down into just more of a standard sounding kick drum that can be useful for things like house, uh, drum and bass, so on and so forth. But the, the thing that I've noticed over the years of um, synthesizing kick drums myself is having something that isn't completely static and something that is pitch moving all the way throughout allows for a, a much more Orga organic sounding kick drum it's, it makes it sounding a lot less synthesized because if I just sort of bring these back to normal and then make this pitch transient very sort of quick like that's the very old school 808 sounding kick drum this is a sort of how kick drums start sounded when they were first starting to be synthesized and that sounds not that it's old but it's something that's been overused a lot now and you're not getting as much life out of that sound Whereas doing more of these sort of pitch changes allows us to step into the territory of making something that one sounds a bit more interesting and sounds a bit more chunkier as well. And like with this transient curve here, this is the thing that controls most of the initial sound. Obviously you don't want to go too far with it because then it can start to sound a little bit weird. And we want to keep obviously most of the frequencies in the low end. And the same with this uh, mid band here, or the, the mid stage of the kick drum. You can decide how long it pitches down for. Now initially, like, like we showed just then, I would just keep this at the middle and this is how I would make my kick drums. But it keeps that pitch sort of in the center. And this is why bringing in this sort of different pitch down really starts to bring us into territory of it. It's starting to roll off and turn into more of a solid rounded kick drum. Now at the moment, when I play this all the way through, you can see obviously it's got this sort of strange sound on the end of it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna control that with an envelope. Now, what I tend to do, and this is sort of best practice as well, is I tend to make my kick drums lasting for an eighth note of the tempo of the music that I'm making. Now in this example, it, I'm going to be backing this up with a house beat. So it's 125 BPM, but if you're going into faster tempos, um, such as drum and bass um, or dubstep, that kind of thing, because obviously even though dubstep is half time, you're working at a faster tempo, um, you're wanting to obviously change the length of this kick. Now at 125 BPM, you're tending to find that an eighth note is lasting around 250 milliseconds. A little bit quicker than 250 milliseconds, it's not exact. So what we're gonna do with this envelope is we're gonna use the hold and the decay to make this last around 250 milliseconds. So the first thing that I'm gonna um, sort out is the hold, because this is the thing that's gonna be the full level sound of the kick drum. And I tend to find, sort of, if you split the two, the, the number in two, so 250 milliseconds. So you're working around 125 milliseconds for the hold, and then this is uh, the decay, sorry. Um, and that allows us to sort of just basically shape that kick drum so it'll only last for the eighth note, nothing longer. Bring that down a little bit further. 
And obviously if we wanted to, we could zoom in on this as well and change the decay shape. Now the reason why we only want it to last an eighth note, now this is um, can change for different types of uh, music. For example, techno, you might want a little bit of a longer kick drum, but an eighth note kick drum allows the, the space in between those kicks for the bass to breathe. If your kick drum is too long, and you put it on a big system, all you're going to hear is that big long low end sub, which is just going to confuse your bass, and it's just going to make the low end of your track lack clarity and just going to be a bit, for lack of a better term, wompy, and it just doesn't sound very good. So this is why having sort of a, a longest eighth note um, kick drum is the best that you can have. That's what I found in my experience anyway. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of bright white noise to this as well, and then we're going to start shaping the sound further with some actual filtering. So if we go to bright white here and we're going to go into LFO2, we're going to shape this with another, actually this is, so this is going to be the front end click of the sound, um, just to give it a little bit more snap at the beginning. Now I've changed the, the rate of LFO2 to an eighth note, um, set it to envelope mode, and then we're just going to bring this down. So imagine this being sort of like a hi-hat click. And that's just to add a little bit more punch to the front, a little bit more click. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get into the filter um, and we're going to start to round off uh, or roll off the, the top end because at the moment it's got a little bit too uh, too much brightness to it um, and because obviously with how this multiband compressor is affecting the high end we can hear some sounds that we don't really want in a kick drum. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this as a quarter note because I don't want this to roll off too quickly um, because we do want that initial sort of high end transient hit. So we're going to bring this down, again set it to envelope mode. So similar shapes, but the, just this one is twice as long as the eighth note. And we're just going to apply that to the cutoff. I'm going to set this to MG low 18 as well. Um, bring the fatness up as well, because I always feel like this just gives a bit, um, a, bit, a bit of a thicker sound. And just by applying that straight away, you can now decide how bright you want your kick drum to be, to how muted you want your kick drum to be. And this is a useful thing to have. And again, all of these techniques, I'm not actually going to share this preset because this is more of a shape the kick drum how you want them to sound. You don't just want to have a kick drum that everyone else has. Plus, plus with the amount of post-processing that I'm going to be doing, um, this preset won't really work by itself anyway. So we have the filter. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to shape some of the low mids because it's a little bit too chunky at the moment. Um, in sort of like the low mid range and what I find is around 300 hertz is a good place to start and but again sweeping through to find out which, what's a sweep spot yeah it's somewhere in the 300 hertz region and that just shapes that mid range a little bit more because without that it just sounds a little bit too chunky there it's got a little bit too much of a knock to it but taking that out just shapes it a little bit stronger. Um, one thing that is useful to do is if you um, add some distortion as well, you can start getting into the um, like big blown out 808 or trap territory. So again, another useful sound to have. And just going between tube and soft clip. Soft clip is actually a really good way to shape the sound as well, which actually I might apply that with this one. Yeah, I like that. And let's put LFO3 on that as well. So again, it's big on the transient, but sweeps down. Okay, that's a, that's a decent sound. Um, I'm also going to show you how we can use uh, some FM as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to use basic shapes. And I find triangle waves are great for this because they have just a little bit of an extra harmonic um, that's a really useful sound to have. Again, you could just use a sine wave, but I find just through trial and error, triangle sounds are re um, triangle waves are really, really cool to use. Let's just take FM from B. Now at the moment, obviously, we don't want it to be fully in, so we're just going to use this LFO shape, and we want this to be a fast sweep down, where this sort of comes in, it starts at its highest point, and then sweeps down. And that, again, just adds a little bit more of a click. It's This is very subtle, this one. It's not very noticeable. And obviously, we can change how noticeable it is with um, the octave as well, so if we plus one that. There we go just in the high end we can really start to notice that and i find having um two octaves apart from the obviously fundamental sound to the fm input is usually the best um best separation to have and then obviously you can to taste decide how much fm from b that you want with the lfo 
that's pretty much it for um, serum not much else that i really want to do in this obviously we could mess around with um a little bit of reverb if you wanted to sort of give it more of a that it's actually in a space but i would probably do that with some uh, reverb outside of serum um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get into some multiband compression next um, but i'm just going to load up a few things to start with because it's just going to allow us to um, quickly move on to different parts of the sound so what we have here is I've got um, a multiband compressor, which is just OTT and um, Serum. We've got the glue compressor, then I've got an EQ for some um, more shaping, and then another glue compressor. Just I use always use glue compressors in soft clip mode, which acts as a limiter, so it stops it from clipping, but allows us to really push the sound as um, much as we want. So what we're going to do with this OTT is we're going to rely, rely on expanding these bands, um, changing the time, and then the amount as a dry wet to see how much of the multiband sound that we want in this. And the, again, the big main ones that are going to influence this sound is obviously the low band and the mid, ba mid band, because obviously that's going to be where the body, um, the fundamental tone of the kick drum is. So I usually tend to find that I start with the mid band so I can get that really uh, shaped and chunky as much as possible. And what I do is I push it until it starts to distort. Like there, it's just getting a little bit too much now. And then I start to bring in the sub. And again, pushing it just until it starts, you can hear it audibly distorting or saturating. There we go. And then um, because obviously we took a lot of highs out of this, this is again to taste the high band. You can leave alone completely or start to reintroduce those high elements again. There we go. And then we're just going to increase the time. Um, and what this, what this does, actually, let me just read, because I always forget what this is. The time control scales the duration of the attack and release controls. Yeah, so this basically just makes the attack and release a little bit longer. And it makes the shape, a, it makes the sound a little bit more natural. Yeah, that doesn't sound natural at all. But that might be a sound that you're going for. But again, test all of these settings out to see what works for you. Or the sound that you're going for. And what I tend to find with these, with the amount, is going sort of be about 75% like three quarters so obviously you bring it all the way down 100 uh, zero percent you may as well not have used this but there we go next thing we're going to do is a glue compressor with the soft clip turned on i'm going to bring the threshold down because i'm looking for that click trying to accentuate that click as much as uh, uh, as i can but without it being too much and obviously as we bring the threshold down this is going to make the sound quieter because that's what a compressor does a lot of people think a compressor is just there for loudness to make things louder Yes, but you're using the makeup gain for that. Um, a compressor without makeup gain, all it's doing is making sounds quieter. Well, that's not all it's doing, it's the way it makes sounds quieter as well. And then we're going to bring the makeup gain, just obviously reintroduce the level again. Again, what I do is I push this until it starts to distort. Yeah, it's a bit too much. So the next thing that we're going to do is this EQ we're just going to use for some shaping. Um, if we just move Serum over here. Actually, let's close Serum down for now. So obviously we've got this uh, frequency spectrum, um, and obviously with this I don't want any high end really because that's where the hats are going to come in and uh, the claps over the top of that. But I do want this click to sort of remain, and I can decide if I want to accentuate that or got ri get rid of it further. But again, think of all of this in the type of and style of music that you're making. You don't want a specifically bright kick drum for something that's... A little bit deeper so like for, for deep house for example you'd want a bit more of a muffled kick drum but for maybe techno or a harder style of music like dubstep or drum and bass you might want your, your kick drum to click a little bit harder and again i'm going to sort of shape the body of this as well but not too much because obviously we've got already got a lot of mids in this sound not really going to touch a sub because again that's at its uh, sort of peak level and one thing we're going to do just to check is I always find around 500 hertz in a, a drum sound you want to sort of not have that much of because that's where a lot of your melody lines, your harmony lines, the top end of your bass, so on and so forth is going to sit. And as you can see, that's already starting to shape the sound. Um, number, no, not number three. Which one is it? Number five. And again, if you sweep through, obviously mainly relying on your ears, visual uh, aids are useful but it's your ears that are going to make the final decision. And again, let's just shape the sound up a little bit more. And we're just going to apply a little bit more glue compression towards the end, see if we can get anything, any more out of this sound without it distorting. Oh, 
there we go that's a very big and chunky kick drum um, so there we go that's pretty much the sound obviously we start with serum we shaped uh, we start with the analog bd sound uh, actually one final point so, um, going through the wavetable position will give you obviously slightly different sounds as well which again is another useful thing to have um, yeah, so we started with analog BD sign. We shaped it mainly with this LFO. So this was the pitch control. This is the thing that controls most of the sound. We tried a little bit of FM just for the transient click, um, which we used on LFO2, and the same with the bright white as well, again, for the transient click. We then shaped the level with the envelope one, or um, so hold and decay on envelope one, and then a little bit of distortion, compression, filter, and EQ, again, utilizing these two LFOs here, just to shape the sound a little bit more. Then after that, obviously, we went into the pro post-processing of this, so we um, got into some multiband compression, some overall compression to control the level, some EQ for sound shaping, and then another glue compressor just to finalize the sound. And what I've done here is I've created a little bit of uh, um, a house um, pattern, so just added this on top of it. So yeah, if we listen to that kick drum that we've made in Serum alongside that hats and clap sound, this is basically the sound that we've gone for. And if I just load up that Serum as well. And obviously that's the first time I've heard it with the, the hats and the clap together, so I'd want to go in and further process it a little bit more. But this shows you the fundamental techniques. Um, and what I've done is over a lot of years of experiment with this, I find this is the most efficient way to sort of synthesize kick drums purely using oscillators with no other sound sources. Obviously, yes, there is um, the bright white noise sample in there, but that's just amazing. I could have just used a hi-hat sample or anything like that, or something that's very bright because that's sweeping down very quickly in level. But they, yeah, I've found this is the most efficient way to do this um, and also focusing mainly on this pitch because I do find a lot of tutorials that just sort of focus on the fundamental pitch transient but then never the body and the tail end of the sound. So you're just left with this static tone where your kick drums can become very tonal. And I find often the tonal kick drums don't really work because they can, they can conflict with your bass line, especially if your bass line's changing from a specific note and it's you're playing like more chordal music, for example. So yeah, I find this a really useful way, and again, quite efficient as well, because we've done this uh, in quite a short space of time. But again, all of these features are, um, and little sort of things that I put into this, they're all there to be tweaked and changed to your liking and the style of music that you're making. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you have, or if you've got any comments or sort of recommendations for any future tutorials that you'd like to see me um, go through, leave a comment below. Obviously, hit that like and subscribe as well. I do stream on Twitch, and we've got a Discord server with lots of um, other producers that get together and sort of share knowledge with each other as well. Those links are in the description. But yeah, until next time, guys, see you later. <laughs>